Buongiorno, buonasera, I don't know what time, what time of day do you watch my videos, I don't know. Uh, there has been so much happening, I've got lots to update you on this week, so although I am nine months pregnant and due to give birth in about a week or so, uh, we are just finishing up everything that we can on the farm before being closer to the hospital in uh, Florence. And uh, we were in Florence uh, this week and I wanted to film more, but it's just being having such a big belly and just it being still so hot in Italy, it's a little bit hard for me to carry around my equipment. I don't use vlogging cameras that, you know, vloggers use that just have, uh, you know, they're, they're quite light. I mean, I use cameras with big <laughs> lenses and, and sometimes I, I bring a tripod and and uh, more than anything I was just worried about uh, pickpockets because I think I'm more of a target like I'm I'm quite nimble as a filmmaker I'm, I'm quite I can almost be invisible but now with my tummy I feel like it's, I truly literally stick out more and uh, and I had my uh, and I had my backpack with my very heavy camera and I just started filming, but then it was, there were so many people in Florence, it's packed. I've never seen it so full in October, but it's almost summertime weather. So it's great for a tourist, I suppose, to visit in this, uh, in this season. However, I just found it completely overwhelming after being in the countryside for so long. Uh, I, these masses of people in every street just blocked. And I even, as even being pregnant, I tend to walk quite fast because I, I know where I'm going. And, 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 and also I just, I, I tend to weave in and out of all the tourists. But uh, I, it was like it was a concert. Like people were just, just squashed up beside each other. And I just got a little bit nervous about uh, someone, you know, I think if you're filming, sometimes it's you can become a bit of a target because people can think, okay, you've got your eye on the shot and you're not necessarily looking at your pockets or your bag. And, and uh, so it just felt a little bit dangerous. Apologies that I would love to have filmed more in Florence, but look, as soon as I pop out this baby, <laughs> I'll, I'll, go, I'll, uh, I'll be back to my, uh, to my, my normal state of, of filmmaking. So much is happening this uh, in this past month because we had the Vendemia, which is the grape harvest. Uh, as many of you know, uh, my husband's family uh, produces olive oil and wine. And if you're interested 
in that I've made uh, several videos on that experience. I've made a whole video which I'll link up now about the Vendemia, the, the grape harvest and all the traditions and, and the struggles as well uh, that they have because you really don't make much money these days from olive oil or wine in Italy. Uh, strangely enough, it's just, it's a very hard, it's a very hard industry. However, the uh, Vendemia is happening uh, at uh, Guido's uh, parents' place uh, just just near Florence, and then here uh, you will have seen in the intro uh, the all the, the the crates just filled with olives, and uh, that's quite exciting as well because we're going to have some some new olive oil soon. However, there's lots going on with all of the builders uh, as well. Uh, we have uh, had a lot of progress, well it feels like a lot of progress to us, uh, with the pool. Um, they put the border of travertine around which looks beautiful even though it's still got that, that, that nasty yellow <laughs> interior which is going to be covered up by the lining. A lot of you have asked why do you have to put on a lining? Why is it not just a, um, painted concrete or tile or something? That's just how, that's what we're allowed to do uh, with our permit. Uh, so don't, I don't know why, I can't tell you. I mean, this is, this is just how the very prescriptive swimming pool permit that we paid a lot of money for and waited over a year for uh, it just says that we can make a pool so that's the way we're making it but I do feel that uh, with this this beautiful travertine uh, which our stonemason <laughs> delivered you can start to see how it might look then uh, we have had the uh, tufo laid and tufo is this uh, very rustic brick which we use a lot around the property uh, it's not as expensive as travertine and uh, and it, it sort of ages quite well we've got it in a lot of places and it uh, the thing is we just want it to kind of connect the pool to that little cottage uh, which is where my parents stay and uh, then we can create a lovely space there. We're thinking of creating a, a sort of day bed against the wall uh, where the, the rose the roses uh, have been, the, the, the cream roses, I don't know if any of you remember. Uh, and so we're just trying to understand how to uh, do the the, the landscaping around the pool, which is which is quite exciting, and uh, and the workmen have been uh, doing a brilliant job. I've sort of tried to to film little pieces so that you can see it all coming together, but it has taken a long time because they're trying to uh, lay it all and uh, make sure that the water can run off. They had to remove the drain pipe so that. Obviously, we don't want uh, water just stagnating, and we don't certainly don't want dirty water running into the pool, and uh, and so they're just we were trying to work out all those logistics. It's still really warm in Italy. It's it's not certainly not autumn or fall yet here. It feels it actually feels like spring. In fact, I think the land believes it's spring because all the flowers have all come back. They think it's spring. Our orange tree is just blossoming. It, it, it it's as though it were spring. Uh, we had these little non-lethal uh, snakes hatched. Uh, Guido saw some of the little baby snakes that had hatched. Uh, just for me, such relief not to have it be sticky. I mean, I'm wearing a dress with sleeves. <laughs> it's just such a novelty not to be just sweating every moment. Um, excuse me, just a moment. That's my mother texting me. Ciao, Mare. Ciao. Cosa fai? Sto le tracce in modo tale che si può pulire. E tornare alla vita normale.
You say you think we've turned a corner. Se è scollinato, come si dice. We've... Non so qual è la versione in inglese di scollinare. We've... Past the top. Yeah. Doubled the top. We've no? crossed the bridge or something, I don't know. <laughs> Got over the hill. Qualcosa, yeah, sì. something. You know that uh, all of the chaos has been happening in every room of the house uh, so that we can get these split, these uh, air conditioning, heating. This has been the main uh, source of, of chaos uh, because it's just been such a, uh, a challenge to drill through all of these thick stone walls and coordinate with the builders, the plumbers and the electricians. Pronto? Eh, sì? Sì, è la vetreria, la doccia. Buonasera, co come sta? Buonasera, bene, lei è tutto a posto? Sì, sì. <ride> Sto... <ride> la pancia è sempre più grossa, via. Eh sì, sì, manca una settimana più o meno, quindi... <ride> ah, wow, sì. siamo arrivati allora. <ride> bene, bene. Sì, sì. <ride> lei lei è, è riuscito a trovare qualcosa in ottone o è troppo difficile? Sì. Allora, ehm, ho fatto una lunga indagine, ecco per questo che sono ah, passato qualche giorno. Eh, praticamente l'ottone non sono riuscito a trovarlo. Ah, ok. E quindi bisogna aspettare un po', diciamo, un, un mesetto mi hanno detto che ci vuole. Ah, ok. Allì... Scusi se, se, se interrompo, comunque il, il suo consiglio è di fare un, eh, una porta di 60 cm. Se, o, o mi sbaglio? Allora sì, il consiglio mio è di fare una porta di 60 cm, sì. se, la, se la vuole fare di 65 si fa anche di 65. Ah. Lei mi potrebbe mandare la foto su Whatsapp se al, su questo numero se vuole? Sì, ok, come, come riesco a mandargliela meglio se su Whatsapp per le mail. Ok, com come vuole, ok, grazie. Vabbè, grazie, grazie. Mille. non mi ricordo il nome. Kylie, Kylie. <ride> Kylie, ok, a presto. Grazie mille, arrivederci. A presto, arrivederci. Oh, that was the glass maker about the shower door. So the shower door is proving a problem. What do you think? Do you think it is necessary to have, see we've got this shower door which it can't be, we can't have the whole door, uh, the whole sort of uh, width of the entrance swing open because it's too heavy. So he's saying we have to make, uh, we have to make it 65 centimeters or something so that uh, only just a part of it swings open. Uh, however, there are going to be these hinges. Now he can't seem to find uh, hinges in in, uh, in, in brass uh, or even in the color, a brassy color that's sort of only, only gold, which sometimes gold can just look a little bit, a bit <laughs> gaudy, let's say, if it's, not, uh, if it's not a good quality. But, but do you think, I mean, should we, I don't know, I just, we, we were thinking that seeing as we have all of the, uh, the shower accessories, all of the bathroom accessories actually in brass uh, and a really good quality, brass, it would just be a shame to have the, uh, what's it called, the arm that's holding the glass, uh, the frame, in, uh, in, in, a, in a gaudy gold and the hinges in gold and the handle, uh, but perhaps that's all we can do, I don't know. So many of you, oh my gosh, wrote and said that you would be happy to help me <laughs> try and find the uh, drain in brass. And again, do you think it's important or can you have a stainless steel drain? And we just automatically thought we should have them be all matching um, or at least that we should try, uh, but it's proving really difficult. The, I'll put some photos up on the screen of the drain uh, grate that we have. So this is a, just a really, annoying dimension. It is 11.5 by 11.5 centimeters by 5 millimeters and I have searched everywhere and I found on Etsy, on just so many places in the world, uh, grates that are brass, that are solid brass or even just uh, you know, a nice color. Uh, however, they're, they're, they're not that, that dimension of 11.5 by 11.5. So Oh, and we've got the we've got the uh, the tube 
it connects to the plumbing, uh, in which it, that grate has to sit perfectly. So then we looked at getting it custom made, uh, but it's just going to cost so much. And then, and then people don't even know if they can do it because it's, it's so thin. <laughs> Wow. So, this is our stove, and this is the giant hole that goes up into our bedroom. <laughs> And then they've made another hole in the ceiling above that room. Oh, I hope it works. <laughs> oh my goodness. See, the idea was obviously to avoid uh, cutting into the beautiful vaulted ceiling. If you remember, this room used to be the stable. And can you imagine, they just went to all this work just for the animals. It's so beautiful, it's like a church, but uh, gosh, this wall is going to be lovely once we have the fireplace and, and all the wood stacked up and oh, it'll be so cozy. And in here, in the kitchen, we have this other little stove, which is considerably cheaper. And that's going to go in this corner. And there they've cut into, cut into the stone wall, which is so complicated. And then also they've cut up there, I see, in the roof. Oh gosh. You can see outside we've got all the wood. Um, there's Guido. Ciao, amore. All the wood stacked up for winter. Yes, better. Hello. Incredible, the book that you have done, no? Yes, it's incredible. It's also the sun. Ah, yes. No, tomorrow is diluvia. Davvero? I'm going to open the leña, but I have the. Oh dear. It's a bit too big. <laughs> for, a, for a little scare. Guido's saying it's, it's, it's meant to be raining tomorrow, so he's trying to put, cover the wood, but... Uh, hmm. Uh, we don't have any spare plastic because no, it's all exactly winter. Yeah. Oh gosh. We need Daddy to make another little... Wooden thing. Yeah. Wood, wood protector thing. Oh my gosh. As I was saying before the, the telephone call came in, so you know how the whole, the most difficult part of this, <laughs> this renovation these past six months has been uh, installing the air conditioning and heating, which is kind of crucial because uh, we're cold in winter and we're very hot in summer. And, uh, and I suppose the rush has been on, uh, on our part has been to get all this done before the baby arrives because the bathroom, it doesn't matter if it's ready, it doesn't matter if our bedroom's ready, but being warm is, uh, is probably uh, quite an important thing when you have a, a newborn baby and particularly if I'm up at all hours of the night uh, breastfeeding. Uh, and uh, and yet now with everything that's happening with the world, uh, I'm not sure if you guys follow the news, uh, but it's uh, yeah the, uh, the prices in Italy now uh, for electricity and gas and everything is just uh, so it's just escalated. It's just gone in, uh, gone gone crazy. So now <laughs> after all of this, we don't even know if we can afford to run heating uh, uh, after all of this. Uh, but anyway, it had to be done. So now we ordered all of this wood. Uh, we got all of the wood stacked up, ready for the winter. Winter is coming and we're still replacing all the windows with thicker glass. And uh, and the, the main thing is that we want to have the option of running wood-fired stoves so that if it gets prohibitively expensive, we have that as an option because we have so many trees that just fall down and we have access to, to wood uh, quite cheaply or, or free. My parents very kindly 
uh, helped me. We were, my, my parents and I, we were just cleaning the, that wall and repainted it. On the other side, in the uh, new or updated kitchen, let's say, uh, we have this secondhand uh, wood-fired stove and we just wanted to raise it a bit so they made, the builders made a platform and then uh, on top of the platform we decided to put the antique terracotta bricks that we took up from the old uh, study which is now the ensuite bathroom and uh, I don't know if you remember that we used some of them on the the bench of the the kitchen uh, just beside the sink there and then the, the rest we're using on this uh, this platform for the for the stove and it's incredible because I just I just love seeing this builder work and cut the stone and it's just to me it's just it's like a work of art it's so beautiful uh, how he's he's uh, he's cut it all and now it's finished and it just looks like it's been there in that corner for a century <laughs> and uh, and that's the beauty of uh, of just this this terracotta that has so much character and meanwhile in the alcove which uh we, they, we had to just redo some things with the the uh the floor and then my mother and father tiled the that uh, floor with with terracotta tiles uh, which was quite difficult because it's quite a, <laughs> a, a, a tight space but they work so well together they're such a, an amazing team I mean my mother is just she she was always the one who's saying measure twice cut once which anyone who's done any building will will know and uh, and my father is uh, is obviously very competent in, in in doing all these things but but she's always behind him cleaning up and making sure things look aesthetically uh, pleasing and so they while we were in Florence they were uh, they were tiling that floor and then putting uh, linseed oil on the terracotta so that it uh, doesn't stain so that it because it's quite porous to begin with and then we had uh, a fridge delivered because I, I don't know if you remember me telling you that we had problems with the fridge breaking uh, and originally I'd seen this beautiful creamy smeg fridge with brass uh, handles oh, it was so beautiful but it is it's just too expensive I mean we just thought uh, we can't justify spending that much on a fridge and it would have worked really well because we just didn't want to spoil the the really rustic uh, feel of that whole kitchen I mean we have we have these stones we have the terracotta we have the timber beams we have this beautiful brass lantern as a light and and the stone sink and then you put in a, a modern fridge and it's just such an eyesore uh, so that's why we, I was looking at the smeg just because it's a little bit more uh, rustic and, and classic but we decided to go for a cheaper fridge, uh, good quality, but cheaper uh, because it's it's not uh, it's just just uh, <laughs> nothing nothing pretty to look at. Uh, but we thought we could put it hide it in this alcove uh, so that when you walk into the kitchen, it's not really on show. The only problem is. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Now. <laughs> Aspetta, fermo, fermo, tu batti il motore dietro. Tu c'hai una puerta di schermo, vai. Eh, qui si è arrivato male. Sono arrivato? Quasi. Eh. We need a lot of space for the fridge between my cakes and and we entertain a lot and we always want to keep wine and 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 even in summer I mean you can't leave vegetables or fruit out because it just goes off so quickly in the in the heat uh, so we, we needed a, a quite a big fridge and the struggle was that when it arrived we had measured it but uh, we yeah they just they it just couldn't get through the door we thought maybe we could angle it or something but it just didn't work uh and so now my father is is trying to take off the doors and carefully move it in put uh, put screw the doors back on and hopefully it will still work can't wait to have a oh my gosh just to fill it with delicious delicious meals and 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 having so much more space when I mean, we're out of our fridge oh my gosh it's always just so 
just so packed because I love I love eating at home. I'm such a homebody, and I think that will only be exacerbated uh, once we have a child because I, I just I love cooking at home. I find restaurants uh, they're great, but I just sometimes I feel like it's so much cheaper to eat at home and it's so much I love knowing where all of our ingredients are coming from because we uh, use so many ingredients that we grow ourselves uh, so yes that kitchen is going to come together it's not going to happen before the birth of this baby but uh, we are getting there slowly this is why I love living in Italy some neighbor just knocked on our door they've just been for a walk in the woods and picked these, these wild mushrooms. This uh, is some strawberry uh, jam with no sugar that our surveyor made and dropped off. And then there's a baker that just comes around door to door and brings fresh bread. While my father was putting handles on uh, the uh, all of these drawers because all of the drawers in this house uh, just have a, a key, one key and then many locks and the keys just always fall out and you have to move the key just to and pull the drawer out by the key which isn't very good. Uh, so he was putting that on while my mother and I set about trying to tidy up our future bedroom Good for someone to take down the stairs. So I went through this big chest of drawers and cleaned out everything. There was just so, so much that had uh, corroded away. And, uh, and paintings that uh, had just, the, the, the frames been eaten by woodworm and the paintings themselves had just basically disintegrated. I did find some paintings that uh, I, I wanted to protect because of the Madonna and things that have, are still in, in, in pretty good shape. found this little flyer for uh, someone at some stage must have got a new fridge but it was many many years ago because it was the the new Fiat fridge and you can tell by the uh, by the ad that it was certainly from another era but it's so uh, it's so funny just uh, just finding these little clues to how people were living here or how Guido's family were living here before A lot of people telling me I should rest and just relax, but uh, for some people, I think, I don't know if you're like me, but it is restful to feel like you are sorting things out. And the thought for me in the future of, of coming back from Florence, from the hospital and finding things in complete disarray, and I've got to sort through winter clothes and try and get them out and, and and, and my mind will be so fragmented because I will be torn between wanting to be with this newborn baby and trying to work out how to breastfeed and all the rest of it. I mean, that doesn't sound very relaxing to me. So right now I, I'm getting quite excited about sorting so many things out. And with the help of my, my mother, who's so good at this and, and shares my love of, of, of just attacking things. And she, we both have so, a lot of energy when my father and Guido will, will go off to, to, to nap or, or have lunch. And my mother and I will say, no, no, no let's keep going. <laughs> and, and, and the two of us just get stuck in there. And one of the reasons we were in Florence was to go to the hospital and check that everything is okay with, uh, with Fragilino, with our, the, the, the baby, and it's, he's super healthy. The only thing is, that's a little bit <laughs> disconcerting, is that they kept looking at us and, and, and looking at the, the, the echographia ultrasound and and saying ah oh, you you guys are so tall both of you je vois deux c'était altissime I, I don't think we're that tall i mean guido is i think he's 185 centimeters i'm 172 that's not it's not exceptionally tall but they said compared to italians uh, we're quite tall and this baby is going to be quite tall <laughs> big uh, so 
yeah, hopefully I should be okay. But uh, as I've said before, I, my, my hope is to uh, have a natural birth. And they said that I would be eligible to give birth in this sort of more alternate uh, section of the hospital. It's a smaller hospital that's attached where there aren't doctors, there are OBs and there's no, there aren't any interventions. There's for women who are doing it without any medication, who don't uh, want an epidural or don't sort of need uh, or prefer to try and not have uh, any interventions. And uh, and that's that's my preference. And they also have in each room a bath, so you can have you can uh, birth the baby in water if you like. And I would absolutely love that because, as you know, I grew up by the sea, on the sea, living on boats, I feel very, very serene in water. So if uh, I'm hoping that will be an option. The only disappointing thing is they told us that because of COVID, I will be completely alone for most of the, the, the contractions and all the lead up to the birth. It's only at the last moment that the husband is allowed in and only one person is allowed in. And, uh, and that is a bit disappointing because uh, naturally I would love to have someone I know there and I think my mother has said that my father was just just crucial in in massaging her and, and being an emotional support and being by her side and not just at the that end moment where the, the baby um, the baby <laughs> arrives so it's a bit disappointing but there's nothing we can do about it they've they've said because of the COVID laws uh, he's not allowed in and then even after that uh, when I'm in the hospital, there's only one visitor allowed per day. So even if my parents were to come, I mean, I'd have to just choose one of them. And then that means Guido wouldn't be able to come or my sister. I mean, you just get one one human can see you per day. They can't like tag team and come in and out, uh, which is <laughs> a little bit sad. But who knows? Maybe I'll be able to convince them. I don't know. Perhaps. I mean... Surely, what does it matter if you're sleeping with your partner and they come in at the end? What does it matter if they're there for the whole the whole labor? I don't know. Anyway, on the subject of pregnancy, I would like to say a deep, heartfelt thank you to Jeff Kennedy. Uh, Jeff sent these wonderful books. Actually, a while ago, um, he sent this book on happiness, which is uh, which I've yet to read because I've just been flat out. I'm sorry, but I did uh, I, I did start reading the the two books he sent on the development of the brain uh, in in a, in, a, in a newborn, and it's just fascinating. And then my father, who God bless him. He's so excited about this child. He's very, my father's very emotional and, and, and can't wait to be a grandfather for the first time. And so he's just devouring this book and he's reading it. I'm going to read it next week. <laughs> but uh, he's been reading it and every day uh, at breakfast and, and at meals, he's been uh, telling us uh, all these amazing facts that he's that he's discovered in this in this book, which is is scientifically backed and is just really interesting. Uh, I mean, our whole family are, are really interested in how the brain works, not just even independent of, of of a newborn. It's just interesting to see how the the the, the human brain develops over over those first those first months and first years and 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 it just makes you think wow this is such a, a a gift to 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 be able to to nourish a human brain as it uh, from from day one and uh, so thank you Jeff for those those books it's such a kind thing I have to apologize that my postal address is not where we live it's not a post office box it is an office where there's a receptionist and, uh, and she had some issues uh, was she was sick this year and so there has been on and off uh, there's been some packages that they arrive but she hasn't we've we've struggled to communicate with her because she she sort of accepted them and put them in a different part of the of that uh, of that office so things that have been delivered and arrived safely in the office, but then haven't made it to us. Uh, so it's uh, so there are sometimes some some delays with that. And uh, I, I yeah, thank you for <laughs> your patience. Uh, another wonderful heartfelt gift is from my dearest, one of my oldest friends, Carla. Carla is Canadian, and uh, we used to be 
magazine editors together uh, so many years ago. And when I just finished university, I think I just finished my degree in uh, in Melbourne. I have a small group of, of friends. I don't have tons, but the ones that I have are just so special and they're very unique individuals. And she's just incredible. She has a, uh, a teenage son and uh, and her husband is British and they've lived all over the world. They've lived in Australia and now they're based in the UK. But she's originally from Newfoundland and she she made uh, she wrote this this beautiful children's book about her experience of being a child and going to visit her grandfather in Newfoundland in Canada and it's so beautiful and she sent me this book and it's quite. Oh, it's quite exciting because she's been working on it so hard and, and she also knits. I don't know how she finds the time because she is a, she is a mother of a, of a teenage son. She travels constantly uh, for work. She uh, does so many different things. And then she also just happens to write children's books. We, we kind of bond over the, over the fact that we both like to be very industrious and, uh, and devote a lot of time to our family. And, uh, and so she is, has written this beautiful book, which is just so warm and, and, and comforting. And, and it sort of really encapsulates everything she is to me. It's sort of whimsical, but also just very grounded in, in, in the important things in life, like spending time with a grandfather in nature. So if you wanted to get the book, uh, you can. It's available uh, worldwide. I'll, I'll put a link below uh, in the description box of this video so that you can take a look at it if, you, if you're interested. It's got the most beautiful illustrations as well. I'm not sure uh, how I will manage my time after the baby comes, but uh, all I can do is see that my mother managed uh, to work and be just an incredibly present mother for us and, and on my father too. And, uh, and so, yeah, I'll, I'll see how I go. Uh, I'll just, I, I suppose the plan is really to play it by ear. I don't think you can have a plan until you know what type of baby you have and what their health issues are and, and how I'm feeling even in my recovery. So uh, I will just let you know and thanks for being so excited for me and, and for us and our family and so supportive. Uh, thank you, as always, uh, to my patrons. When I take maternity leave, <laughs> uh, I, will, uh, I will put a pause on Patreon uh, because I don't want uh, you to be charged if I'm not putting out videos. So I suppose I'll just see what happens and then I will, uh, yeah, I, I will let you know uh, as, as, an, as and when I, I decide what I'm capable of doing. But don't worry, I'm, I'm definitely planning to, um, to take a little bit of a break. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you for commenting. Thank you for getting me to, what am I at now? I don't know, 265,382 subscribers. Um, that's incredible. And I know that YouTube will punish me for taking a break. Um, I, I mean, I think at the end of the year, I took uh, two weeks off and suddenly everyone was writing to me saying, I'm not getting notifications. You've been away for uh, months. I could, because I haven't, your videos are not suggested to me anymore. And that's what YouTube does to you. If you don't publish every week, it buries you. So uh, I'm going to have to work extra hard once I come back from the, the break that I take, however long that is, uh, because it's uh, yeah, YouTube just likes to penalize you if you don't if you don't upload every single every single week. Uh, but if you are subscribed and you click that to get the notification as well, that means like clicking the little bell, then you'll definitely know when I'm publishing because uh, I get so many emails from you saying oh, I don't. Uh, I, I haven't heard from you in, in months and I'm like, well, oh, I've been publishing every seven days, every week of the year. <laughs> but uh, I, it's just the, it's just the YouTube algorithm. It likes to, it likes to bury you if you, if you take even a week off. Thanks for watching. Have a beautiful weekend. A la prossima. <laughs>